Hi, and welcome. It is the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, and this is the final feast weekend that we have that closes out the Christmas season. I'm standing here at a church in the Nativity in Midland Park, a stewardship parish, in front of our baptismal uh, font and our baptismal pool. And it's there to remind us how everything is all connected. So many times we think about Christmas in a very linear way, that Jesus is a baby and now all of a sudden, a couple weeks later, we're celebrating the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord when Jesus was 30 years old and being baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, in the River Jordan. But more importantly, what all these feast days tell us is how it's all connected to the cyclical things of our lives. And baptism is a wonderful way to end the whole Christmas season. Just because, think of the symbols of baptism that we use. We have water here, we have a white garment, we have chrism that we put on the child's or the adult's forehead or the top of their heads. And then we also have a lighted candle, which reminds us of the large Easter candle here that we have in our churches. Those symbols are simple, but yet they're profound. And more importantly, they talk to us about how we are to follow Christ as disciples. The fact that water gives us many different images. It gives us images of death and life. It means that we plunge ourselves into the baptismal waters to die to ourselves, only to come up refreshed and have new life amongst us. So it's the same way with Christ. We die in the crucifixion of Christ, but we rise with him in the resurrection. And that's what Jesus is always inviting us back to, to see those cycles of life and to know that we're not doing it alone. The chrism that is poured over our heads as a child or as an adult reminds us that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is enlivened in us and is nurturing us and almost moisturizing us to go out and to spread the good news of all others. The white garment shows us that we are to live lives that are worthy of this life of Christ that we are trying to follow, knowing that we are limited and even sinful at times. The lighted candle also encourages us to bring that light of Christ into the dark places of this world, to fight against the evil that we face each and every day, sometimes in a very subtle way and sometimes in a dramatic way. My friends, this feast of the baptism of the Lord is truly a beautiful one, and one to remind us that as we close out this Christmas season, we need to walk forward. We need to say, what are we going to do now as we prepare in these next few weeks before Lent starts, and to really get, gather ourselves together to say, what is 2013 going to mean for me? The most important thing is that we do it together. Because as we look at our baptismal call, we have to look at the way Christ lived his life, the way that Christ prayed, the way Christ related to other people, the way Christ loved. Those are the elements and the charges that we have in our own lives to look at. How do we do all those things in imitation of Christ? And I think more importantly, the fact that we don't do it on our own. My friends, that's why we come together as a community week after week, because we need each other. We need to sit beside each other and say those prayers that maybe we've said a hundred or even a thousand times before to remind ourselves that other people are struggling and working each and every day like we are. We know that the world can be a very scary place at times. But when we can help each other and know that someone is sitting next to us, there's almost nothing that we can't deal with or work through. That's the whole meaning of why Jesus allowed John to baptize him in the Jordan. He submitted to John's power of baptism because he wanted people to see what it meant to be a follower. Everything Jesus did was to teach us and to show us how to live our lives. Come, join me here 
at the church in the nativity where we are trying to do that for each other we have a wonderful new program that we are starting for during the lenten season this year and it's called discovering christ and you can go on the website and sign up it's uh, it's a program that's going to last for seven weeks it's starting on february 7th it's going to be seven consecutive thursdays and one of the neat things about this program is we're going to start off with dinner at 6 45 and then at 7 30 we're going to have a presentation that will be given by myself and then we'll have a short 10 minute break for some dessert and coffee and then we'll get together at tables and discuss with some discussion questions the topic on what we were talking about that evening at 9 15 we'll be done and we'll be walking out the door so it's basically from dinner to the end a two and a half hour experience and i really encourage you this is a great thing for you to do for yourself during this Lenten season. I know it might be a big commitment for people, even some of our younger families that have children, um, but think about it. Plan it. Maybe you can get a babysitter to come those couple of hours each night or get somebody else that you know that can watch your children that you trust. Because this is something that I really invite everyone in the parish that is able to come to be part of. It will be something that will be enjoyable, it will be thought-provoking, and I guarantee you, it'll be something that will help you grow in your own spirituality. We are sending out different things, but you'll see in the bulletins here, we have um, bulletins this week, but here is the bottom part of our flyer that we are sending out as a registration form. So we ask you to fill this out. You can, again, what I said before, you can also go online and fill out electronically if you'd like to be part of this. Please, don't hesitate. Go with your gut. Do it right away. This Sunday also is a great Sunday because we are starting with the confirmation kids, uh, their, their enrollment and their beginning of their process to really study and reflect on the sacrament of confirmation and what that's going to mean for them and how they're going to live that out in their lives. So I ask for your prayers for them and for all the people here at our church. God bless you.